Hey guys, we love sugar. Sugar tastes good. Problem is, it's causing obesity, it's linked to type 2 diabetes, so we switch over to artificial sweeteners, which at a certain level, and now it's linked to early dementia. In fact, if you're drinking diet sodas on a regular basis, you're 10 times more likely, studies say, in getting early dementia. So we have a sugar, it's called Next Sugar, it tastes great. It's as sweet as sugar. It's 100% on the sweetness index. Yes, there is an index for that. And guess what? It's half the calories, guys. You can bake with it, try it, get going, do your thing. Because in either game, life or football, is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. How are you doing? Yesterday I got cut off kind of short. Today is going to be the same thing as I am driving. I figure I'll, um, I will work on the audio. Um, I realized that I was hooked up to a mic and the mic was not um, feeding into the MP3 player. So I'm just going to do it old school and do it straight into the built in mic. And as the show goes on, you know, we'll get better, um, I promise. Uh, because one thing I learned when um, I was filming a, a commercial for something, and you know, a small little commercial, I think it got uh, 50 hits on YouTube, um, is that that you can have the best lighting in the world. Um, I went out and bought some extra lighting, and in fact, I was sweating. The lighting was so so good <laughs> that uh, it made it horrible. Um, you know, I didn't get the new LED lighting. Um, it wasn't in my budget, so. So I get the lighting and everything else, and the guy that um, that was filming, he had a great camera, high definition, everything. Um, problem is, he said, sound. He's all, if you want to make a good video, he's all, nothing will distract or take away from a good video as sound. Because, you know, everything could look nice, high def, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as you hear the, the inferior sound, people are done. They're, they're not focused. And... One thing I notice in public speaking um, is, like, if I'm if I'm doing a, a, a funeral, a eulogy, or something, and um, I figure, okay, this is the this is the person's last uh, public uh, representation. You know, um, somebody's gonna say something good, hopefully, about this person, and from then on, it's maybe at a party they'll mention them, but it's probably not gonna be in a public forum. So if you go up there, and this is with, with anything, you go up there and you're giving a speech, you owe it to that person to not be nervous. Because what happens is if you're nervous, guess what people are focused on? They're not focused on the message, they're focused on you. Whether you're fidgeting, even moving your foot, um, anything. You know. So the first thing you do is, it'll all start with the least. Uh, you, know, you stand up there, you stand balanced both feet so you don't get as tired as quick um, you lean on one leg you're going to switch to the other leg you're going to get, get fatigued um, and you, you take breaths and this is one thing i'm working at too and this this is the show is is stuff that i've had problems with so um, you know i've educated myself uh, in various ways mostly through, through reading um, but what I uh, and you'll hear me uh, improve too as the shows go on. You know, I tend to say you know, and um, and one thing that you're supposed to do is anytime you have the um, I should change the, the topic of this to public speaking. Anytime you have the uh, the opportunity to say um or you know, you're supposed to pause and take a deep breath. The problem is I haven't been speaking regularly like um, like you would if if you 
did this for a long time or were a comedian or, or whatever. Um, but it's, you know, like anything else, you have to bomb at first and, and then you'll get better. Um, but I've always challenged myself. So at least, at least I'm not starting from a, a too deep a hole, um, where I think I could plane out a little bit quicker than, than maybe if I never did. Um, but the point is, you know, like I was talking about in the first half of this, this podcast is, you know, you should not, uh, judge your, your future performance by your past performance because while that is true um you know if, if if i hire somebody and i look at their record and it's like oh gosh they've been arrested three times in the last four months for petty theft but they tell me oh yeah i'm coming clean now blah 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 well i'm going to judge their future performance by their past because that's all i got to go on um you pass the test of time and we'll talk but uh, bottom line is the same scenarios will come up and um, unless you are working on it actively working on it like you're working on building a car um you know things aren't going to change for the most part Um, so anyway so when you're um when you're doing your public speaking uh you know you just want to stand there be confident take deep breaths but the most important thing is practice rehearse before you know you get you start out with your um your notes and it's a good thing to have notes but you want to go over your notes so many times where you're so familiar with it, where you're not reading it, it's just kind of reminding you. You're just kind of seeing it as a blur, or when you're reading it, you're going through it real fast without even thinking. Um, and then it comes across to the, all, the the audience as polished, and and they give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, no matter how you speak, um, they're like, oh, "Okay, this guy's good, um, so he's doing it right." So now I'm going to focus on the message. Um, and of course, you know, you want to write your messages, um, how however you want to write them, but. Um, the one thing I learned is, like, I just did a, a, a wedding. It was my uh, in-laws' 40th wedding anniversary, and there's a couple, like, probably a couple hundred people there. And uh, my my mother-in-law, um, you know, God bless her. Um, I'm sure she's not listening, but um, yeah, I love her. She's a very unique person, but you know, sometimes um, she could be uh, tough to to deal with. And I had a joke planned. And the joke was, I go up there, I'm like, hey guys, uh, congratulations, 40 years. And, and I went through some stuff. Oh, 40 years ago, you know, um, Elvis was still performing. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so I made it interesting. But then I also try to make it funny. And I go, oh yeah, by the way, um, I had a talk to uh, Robert before the wedding. And I was trying to get some, some ideas. And unfortunately, he asked me to serve you. Uh, these papers I'm holding in front of me are not notes. They are divorce papers. And unfortunately, Juanita, it's not going to work out. And then um, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, but you know what? After all these things, um, you know, I went over, you know, how much they've been through, uh, when they started, um, you know, who was in office, and all the stuff that happened in 40 years. I go, you know what? Damn it, Robert. And I ripped up the paper. I go, I'm not going to do it. So... It, in theory, it worked great. It worked okay. I was having some problems with the mic. But in the back of my mind, before I did it, I was thinking, she's liable to stand up and walk out of here. Because uh, it was that kind of day. You know, it, it was literally like a big wedding, um, even though it was an anniversary. And so once you start thinking it may or may not work, I toned it down a notch. That's all it did is, is while it wasn't a debacle, it was just, I could... I wasn't as focused as I needed to be, and then I I got right away that she was going along with it, enjoying it, and then you know you stepped it up. But you know it was probably eighty percent. Um, and but the thing is, uh, you get somebody that does that for a living, and uh, oh, they'll knock it out of the park. They'll go up there, they'll say, "All right, here's what it is. I'm up here. I'm going to do my best anyway." Um, and, and just like with with my kids, I, I tell them, "You go to school. You're there anyway. You're there for the seven hours a day." You may as well do your best. You may as well be an A student. You know, make it interesting. So, um, you know, and, and that's, you know, if I did it again, I would, I would, or when I do it again, um, hopefully somebody will ask me back. But because um, I do like to talk, you know, I'll just be all in. And it's a reminder that I knew that ahead going in, but since I, I don't do it every day professionally, um, you know, speak in front of a live audience where you're seeing their response and you're hearing their laugh. Um, and I think that's why a podcast can be more successful is because you don't have these built-in hang-ups because 
I'm sure there's a certain percentage of you eventually that are just going to, you know, throw the, the your phone in the toilet because, uh, you know, you don't like what I say and, and how I say it. But I'm going after the 80% that I think um, will appreciate not just what I have to say, but how I say it. And, you know, not that I'm better than anybody else. It's just sometimes we need supplemental people giving us advice, um, a different perspective, um, because that's how I am, and uh, I guess that's how I grew up, is um, I didn't have, my dad was, he was doing his own thing, which is fine, um, because that makes the kids kind of a little more responsible, so you tend to look for your uncles and and other people for for their advice and their input, Um, and uh, so, so anyway, yesterday we were talking about, um, you know, your, your addiction and, you know, that could be anything. Um, and I, I, it's, I described it as, and there's probably a better definition, but just anything that kind of is habitual, I, I think that stops you from, from doing what you, you want to do. Uh, like, I'd rather do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to use this thing and it's going to kind of, um, keep me, uh, I want to say it'll satiate me, but like my kid's video games, when he gets on the game, all his problems stop. He's numb to the world. It it makes him feel good instantly. He doesn't have to think about anything. Um, and if you did that in balance, I think that's fine. Um, but I I think even drug users and, and again, I'm, you know, my, I'm going to be interviewing my, my pastor one day and, and, uh, you know, he's going to hear this and say, what in the hell? Um, I, I think even occasional drug use, uh, you know, certain drugs, of course, um, you know, if, if that's all people did, people would not even bring it up. There wouldn't even be a term for it, you know, a drug abuse. It literally, um, it's the abuse of it. Um, I never smoked a joint in my life, never took a puff, um, not because I'm better than anybody else because I made up for it with beer. Um, it's just because I made a little mental note. I said, look, here's, and, and I'm, I tend to bounce around a little bit, um, because I, I want to stay on, on, on the best example I have. And I figure you're not going to remember everything anyway. Um, but I just try to cover everything. Um, anyway, uh, if, if I told myself this, okay, if the world is trying to make you feel like a loser, which it does every day because let's face it, everybody's jealous of everybody um, in certain circles. So you don't need to help it along by doing something that is, um, I guess, connected to what losers do. And like for instance, we, we have the term pothead. Um, you know, oh that guy's a loser. You know, if he does it all the time, he, he talks a certain way, dresses a certain way. Um, so. It, let's say you're on the fence about your um, success and uh, you know everything else. Um, sorry, getting the message. Uh, you're on. Sorry, turn that off. Uh, you're getting a, a message from the world that says, "Hey, you're uh, you're this, that, and the other," and you're like, "No, I'm not. No, I'm not." And now you're smoking pot. Well, guess what? You know, you just probably went over to their side of the fence. Um, you know, I always say, if you're two steps ahead you can afford to take uh, a step back like I think it's Bill Maher Uh, he's uh, he smokes pot doesn't drink he thinks it's too hard in his body um, which is you know fine whatever works for him but he couldn't get away with it if he was average or dumb you know he couldn't take a a step back but I think he's he's smart I mean him and I probably uh, differ on a lot of things but that's not what we're talking about here is is he, he's smart, so he can afford to take a step back. I have a family member, too. Um, I have an uncle that's a real go-getter. I mean, this guy is always thinking and doing. He, he's a visionary, and he does it because he had um, or has that Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, and um, you know, he never really did it, and then he started doing it so he could uh, deal with his cancer. And, uh, again, it's, it's, I, I see how it's slowing him down, but he was so far ahead he can get away with it. I had a guy that worked with me one time, 18-year-old guy, and he was saying how he did, um, you know, he smoked pot every day, and it was shocking.